before it random and useless data just so people couldn't be like, this is stupid. But I feel like so, with you, I wouldn't need that. And you no, would just embrace so it. My rule of thumb, because I'm often in front of rooms full of people, is you never apologize before you start. Yeah. If you get in front of a room full of people and you're like, hey, sorry, this isn't going to be a great message. This isn't going to be – the band didn't practice. Like, never <laughs> – if you apologize, people are out already. Yeah. So sometimes I'm like, Mark, just own it, man. Like, don't – you don't need to preface it that it's silly movie data. We know who you are. Just be Thank you, man. Just go for it. Yeah, you know, Megan's been telling me that for years because I've just learned – because I've had some big hits. I had one about Marvel data recently where I figured out the alone time, and it got 30,000 upvotes on Reddit. Huge post. But right. People don't – see, the thing is people don't read, and then they say this is stupid. I'm like, yeah, I said it was stupid four times in the in the thing. I'm like, I preface everything in the beginning, and they don't read. So I've just learned to be too defensive. So when people are like, this is stupid, I'm like, read the second paragraph. Or where's this? I'm like, read the fifth paragraph. Like I try to cover every complaint that people have with my right. data. And maybe that's too defensive, but I also like combating trolls. But I'm like, I wrote that. You didn't read it. It's on you, turd. I, I think that – I think that – um the sentence, I like combating trolls, could mean so many things, yeah. depending on which movie you're in. Troll Hunter, so, is Willow, Troll Hunter your favorite movie? Ernest Scared Stupid. I love movies with trolls. Fellowship of the Ring, right. Lord of the Rings, Troll Hunter Hobbit, is fantastic. Harry Potter. What, what do you think is the, the lamest and the best cinematic troll? Okay. Ooh. Trantor the Troll from Ernest Scared Stupid. Is the what? The greatest <laughs> Just, ever. Without even hesitation. Oh I, I do want to say the final, so much. the final troll at the end of Troll Hunter is a beautiful – it's one. Of, it's a beautiful scene. I, whenever I watch it, I kind of tear up because right. it's just a beautiful troll that's sick. It's not evil. It doesn't wish people well. It's just gone crazy because of rabies, and it has to get put down. So that breaks my heart, and I like the little squishy trolls that poop on the ground and get turned into muck and willow. <laughs> what about oh. Trolls the movie? Troll 2 and Troll? No, Trolls, like the dolls. Oh, no. They're not Trolls. <laughs> just, uh, hard no. No, oh, hard no. I know, hard I did no. that on purpose. Hard so, no. What about you? Okay, well, I just want to touch on Megan's uh, Troll the Dolls for a moment. <laughs> We're all of, of essentially the same, the same age demographic. Yeah. And so when we were children and Trolls kind of came out with their first wave of popularity we would be great for six or seven um they tried to market a bunch of trolls to to boys so mattel like put out like battle trolls and like one was a cyborg and and one was a commando oh and, i had those right and so they reused a lot of accessories from other toy lines oh and i had a swamp thing to action figure but i had lost his like capture net thing mm -hmm. but then this battle troll had the same accessories and i was like oh if i buy this battle troll i can get swamp thing his his thing back and i had to explain to my dad in the store that i wanted this troll and he's like son like what what <laughs> what do you want Tro get something cool i'm like ah this is this is cool dad and he's like no it's not and i had like a real like <laughs> conversation about why why i wanted a, a troll a troll doll oh man i mean if you've read neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, the guy, the main central character, his desk is covered in trolls. Hey, what's your favorite yep. cinematic troll, Meg? Uh, probably Troll Hunter trolls. I don't remember one specifically. It's been so long. It's a classic. Or the trolls from the Hobbit movies. Yeah. Oh, the troll play. Yeah, oh, that yeah. big guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys. I like the guys... cave troll with a battering ram head at him, and the cave troll with a catapult on its back. <laughs> so I. Love a trebuchet. I, I gotta say, mine's David Bowie. Oh, from uh, oh. Pan, uh, Labyrinth. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a good one. The Troll King. He's the he's or the, the most beautiful king. of all trolls. Wait, he's the Goblin King. Isn't he? Is he a Goblin or is he the Goblin King or the Troll King? He's the Goblin King. Well, I apologize. I take that back. I thought I was gonna have like a big reveal, and it turns out I'm just an idiot. <laughs> you might have people trolling you now. Oh, imagine that. I would love trolling it. Of the, <laughs> the Troll trolling of the trolls. Adam, get on there. Lighthouse yeah. Raspberry Square, get on there. Is that like the get trolling on. of the bells? The, the trolling of the yeah. trolls? The trolling of the Hodges? Now, so I have, I, have the a, latest? I have a data fact that's going to blow your mind. Can I tell you something real quick? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, hit me with it. But before I forget. So in this film, Hobbs and Shaw. I was just going to say when, which film. When Dwayne Johnson <laughs> <laughs> in uh, War Horse. Now, so in this movie, when the first fight between 
uh, Hobbs and Shaw and Brixton. Hobbs goes to punch Brixton, and Brixton anticipates that Hobbs' punch will have a force of, like, 1,235 pounds. That's the force what? that is set on the screen. I did some homework. What? And Drago, from Rocky IV, his PSI is 2,150, which comes out to 8,600 pounds. So, by numbers, <laughs> by numbers that we're talking about, Dolph Lundgren hits, like, five times, six times harder than uh, Hobbs. Well, I mean, he's Dolph Lundgren. He's basically a he's, superhero. Yeah. Genetically engineered by Russian's best scientists. Yeah, right? He's a universal soldier. Is this even yeah. a conversation? You're right. You're, who, wait, who wins? Dolph from Universal Soldier, Megan? Mm. Or Brixton? Which, which Universal Soldier? The, oh, goodness. You pick. From Universal Soldier Regeneration. I was just going to say that. For, all right, Regeneration versus Brixton. Who wins? What's, what do you got? Who's going to uh, win this? I mean... This is Meg's over here thinking. Meg's I Meg's don't know. really that's a tough one. Meg's flop sledding over here. She's I feel not like, like this. This is tough because I know how much you love Lundgren, <laughs> and I know how much we mutually love Idris. That's hard. Yeah, tie. Tie. They go get they go get some Swedish it's meatballs like, and take lager a cop together. Out here to tie. I like Do you it. think they would just walk into a room, see each other, nod, and then walk out? Like they wouldn't talk. They would just like understand each other's power. Yeah, like, it's kind of, yeah, they, they get it. They're like, this would hurt both of us, and we both don't want to get hurt, and there's no reason for it. So let's right. not do it. Right. That's so, responsible. I, I, just, like it. I just wanted to drop that data on you. So, Hobbs and Shaw, this came out last year, in yes. 2019, and you said, Adam, that this was your favorite, like, uh, did you say it was the best film or your favorite film of 2019? It was my favorite film of 2019. Now, I do have the, like, I've been called out on it that I'm I'm too sentimental, but when I get to experience a movie through my kids' eyes, like I bring them into the theater, yeah, it it amplifies that like a thousand percent for me. So when I saw Wonder Woman and my daughter was standing in her chair oh, cheering in the yeah. theater, Aww. like there's there's not a better moment than that, right? No. And so my son was home with me alone because my wife and, and daughter were up at summer camp and we were doing junior high camp here. And so we went out to the movies with a couple of friends, and this was his first forte into the Fast and the Furious world. And he was, like, blown away by the movie he was watching and, and again, like, screaming and cheering. And I was like, this – it was just like a moment in time that I you can't get that back. So it was my favorite movie experience of 2019. Uh, yeah, I mean – I wish I would have watched Wonder Woman with Megan. So I was in San Francisco and I was exhausted. And I, I made you go watch and, it. Yeah, and I had to. I was just so burnt out from work. I was like on my fourth work trip in like the month, and I was exhausted. And I went to this theater in San Francisco. They had a balcony and a bottom floor. Everything was sold out. And I would say never before in a comic book movie. This is rare. It was probably like seventy percent women in the theater. Right. And everybody, dude, in the theater was cheering and clapping. I had never seen that. In a th like, normally with, like, Star Wars, it's the fanboys cheering or this, that, Batman, yeah. stuff like that. I had never heard cheering like that before by, like, a non-comic book audience. This was just an audience who loved the movie. And that's why I, why right. I love Wonder Woman, because of the theatrical experience I had. Yeah, well, I didn't have Meg there, no, but it was so cool. I know, you I know was nodding crazy? at you like I knew, yeah. but I, then I'm realizing I wasn't there, so... <laughs> yeah. In like 2006, I went to a big like conference at a huge church in Chicago, uh, Willow Creek. It's called. And there's like 30,000 people there. It's a, it's a mega church. But Ralph Winter goes there. Oh. So he he's like the producer of like X Men and yeah. like and so he's buddies with Brian Singer. So he arranged two weeks early for us to see a screening of Superman Returns. Oh, nice. So they said we have like 200 tickets, and it was like you know 10,000 people at this thing. The first 200 people after the session to go to and get the tickets can go see it. So I just ran out during the session. <laughs> Trucking people. Just like – and the, the lady on stage was like, not yet. And I was like, no. And I just ran <laughs> and, and got tickets for me and my buddies. And we went. And like in hindsight, that movie is okay at best. But we were so jazzed to see it like two weeks early. Yeah. And everybody else, we, we were like, as soon as the credits happened, and there were those Richard Donner credits, I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and uh, I came back like, you, and so all my buddies were like, you saw it. I'm like, I saw it, and it's spectacular. <laughs> and then it came out, and they are like, no, it's not. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not spectacular. I'm going to say this right now. Nothing with Parker Posey 
is all bad. So I was going to suggest that we do Blade Trinity because I just heard your Blade Final Fight yeah, uh, Final Fight episode. And Blade Trinity is my favorite Blade movie just because of Parker Posey. All right, let's do it. I love Blade oh, Trinity. Oh, I mean, I, I, I'm in. Let's add it to our, our list it's, here. <laughs> it's yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Oh yeah, Ryan, oh, yeah, let's do it. All right, so I guess we should get into Hobbs and Shaw here before we, we go on break. This reminds me of when I go to the movies and I'm so excited about all the trailers and we get to the end of the trailers and I look at Mark and I go, what movie are we here for again? Yeah, <laughs> Rise of yeah. Skywalker. And he gets annoyed at me because it's some big movie, but still. I don't get annoyed. I'm, I'm a very understanding <laughs> husband. So this is a tale. That, that uh, almost got out of hand real quick. I was like, yeah. I'll get annoyed with you. like <laughs> Lovingly. This is a this is a tale of Lucas, Rebecca Hobbs, and and Deckard Shaw. Not what, all right. I just got to tell a quick story. Another one. Adam and I were really excited about the announcing of this movie, and he and I went and made a Hobbs and Shaw thing, like Calvin and Hobbs. But we spelled Hobbs wrong, <laughs> and we got the wrong Shaw brother name, right? Because we acted too quick. But that's we were so we, like when this was announced, we were super excited. And I mean, this movie did not disappoint. I mean, it did seven hundred sixty million dollars worldwide. 67% to me. I stand by our Hobbs and Shaw cartoons. It's funny. It's so fun. Yeah. Didn't they announce this, I mean, really closely after the movie, the last Fast movie came out? Yep. Yeah, like right after Fate. You know, like yeah. let's let's break off. Let's do this. There, you know, I don't know the inside stories, but there's definitely some beef between all the, you know, Vin and the Rock. But, but, but they yeah, but they it was like it down. really fast. And, after but this the is movie. The Rock's move, though. Like this is his second time he's done a spin-off series. Yeah, he he jumps in the mo- like he jumps into a lot of sequels and then so the originals he makes don't really get sequels, but the sequels he's in of get sequels. Like Jumanji but I, gets I another would one. Compare this to like the Scorpion King where he was in the mummy <laughs> as a character yep. and then he got his own franchise out of it. Yeah, great 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 well, archer. As he says, he's really likable. Yeah, hey, nice babushka. <laughs> so I like your babushka. Like this this movie, I mean, I I I think one another thing is I'm very. We talked about this on our Fast Nine trailer uh, talk that we did. That's actually been really popular and people love it. Go listen to it. Adam and I are on fire. What just, I lo- <laughs> just we're just dropping bombs, aren't we? Not letting like, it sweet, happen. Letting it happen. It was originally supposed to be like 15 minutes and it's an hour. So <laughs> it's like this episode. So we uh, what I think what I find most impressive is Jason Statham is a mass murderer. Shaw is a mass murderer in these movies. He murdered about 40 people in the beginning of Furious Seven. But you like him and Hobbs so much together, and he becomes Uncle Statham in Fate of the Furious, they just sort of forget all of it, and you just kind of roll with him having a nice morning routine of making omelets and drinking coffee, while I'm sure the many orphaned kids of the policemen he murdered are having a hard life. But you don't really think about that because you just like the character so much. I don't know. Did you guys think about that? Do you... Well, now I'm depressed. Thanks. <laughs> no, I thought, honestly, when they do their, their, their like morning routines... I just think that Statham and Dwayne Johnson's morning routines. I don't think they're acting. I think they're yeah. just waking up. They put GoPros in the house, and then they just had them go around. Right? Because that, okay. that's how The Rock works out, and that's like – I have that, a note I think here that's just them. It's, about like, how many pillows are on The Rock's bed. That's a lot of pillows. <laughs> it's a lot of pillows. But when For you're, a single you're, man. When you're The Rock, though, you need a lot of cushioning. That guy that's is, is massive. He smushes a regular yeah. A regular mattress can't sustain his – just density. Did we pay attention to if that mattress actually can fit his height? Does does his daughter live with him? I think so. I think when he calls her from the field, there's a nanny or someone in the background. Okay. And then Adam, we noticed some. Megan noticed something during the family tree scene. I, I did the math. The Rock eats nine thousand calories for breakfast. I did all the math on everything. Of course he you eats. did. But that was a cheat day. Yeah. I mean, his other real life cheat days have been up to seven thousand, so it's not that unbelievable. But when she's making the family tree. The mom mm-hmm. is completely left out. Right. That's mysterious, right? I mean, well, my... I think... Go for it. So go ahead, Megan. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, uh, I, I think the girl is probably just being a brat to prove a point and get something she wants. <laughs> Fair do enough. you think? Do you think that the daughter in A Perfect World will get her own spinoff series where she's looking for her mom? Oh. And it's been a different... It was a different daughter between Fate and this one, so they'll just make her five years older and the next right. one and have a new daughter. Oh, right. That makes me think of Ant Man Girl. Oh yeah. Wait, I, I have a question, Adam. Yes. When they fast forwarded five years in Avengers Endgame, and we realized, spoiler, that <laughs> we're never gonna get that awesome daughter back from Ant Man in movies. Were you depressed? Yep. The fast forward five years 
you've heard my theory on this whole 